Ah! That was stupid. That was stupid. On the top of an unaspiring Tia. Happy birthday. Thank you both. I wasn't expecting this. We were descending from the summit of an aspiring Tia. The day had been a perfect summit day, except for the moments where I was scared. Oh! I don't go adventuring to get scared. I love the challenge of rough, wild terrain, long days, uncertain weather, and exploring yep. new back country. Anytime you don't want to do it anymore, yep. turn back, okay? The fear you experience when exposed to steep drop-offs is a reaction deeply rooted in our aversion to potential danger and the fear of falling. This response can be overwhelming, manifesting as a highlighted sense of vulnerability and a keen awareness of the physical risks involved. The sheer verticality and the vast open space below can trigger a dizzying sense of disorientation and vertigo, making you acutely aware of your own fragility in the face of nature's grandeur. This fear, while daunting, is also a critical component of our respect for the mountain, reminding us of the importance of caution, preparation, and respect for the environment when navigating. As we flew south, Alistair McDowell had just broken the fastest known time for climbing to Tatia, just over nine hours from the road end and back. We had lunch in Wanaka with Alistair, where he gave us the beta from his amazing run up and down aspiring. We'd studied Alistair's video from his first one day climb, which made it all look very easy. Mount Aspiring Tisitia is classified as grade two plus. That means sustained snow slopes or sustained steep rock scrambling, a steep pitch of snow or grade 14 rock climbing. Ridge travel may involve some tricky, very exposed sections. In our planning, we range from taking full gear, rope, harnesses, crampons, two ice axes, all the way through to just taking micro spikes and one lightweight ax, yeah. like Alistair had taken. We settled on crampons and one ice axe with a plan to turn around if that was not enough to make it safe. Normally, the plan would be to walk into Colin Todd Hut above the Bonner Glacier, stay the night, and do an out and back climb of the mountain. Our weather window only worked for us to start from Aspiring Hut, a full day's travel from Colin Todd. But Alistair suggested it would take 11 hours to summit from Aspiring Hut, so we started just before six. These are the days you treasure. Clear sky, no wind, and a big mission. Within a few hours, we were off the track into the back country, making our way up to Evan Cole. This is a pretty gnarly route, steep waterfall and rock slabs. It required lots of attention. The view from the coal is jaw dropping. The Bonnie Glacier as far as you can see with aspiring rising above. We crunched across the glacier in our crampons and climbed up the kangaroo patch. The snow slope steepened for the last 100 metres. This required all my focus, carefully placing my feet in ice axe. It was nerve wracking. My water bottle fell out of my pack and slid down the slope, adding to the tension. We arrived at the top of the patch to eyeball the next obstacle, the rock slabs and the buttress. Yeah. We dropped our gear, our night gear, and hid it from those curious Kia. If it wasn't for the thousand meter drop-offs on either side of the ridge, most of this would look okay. I tried to block out the wider view and concentrated on the next section. We got a little off track, but found a way onto the ridge line 
where the snow slope eased and we could walk to the top. 11 hours after leaving the hut, we arrived on the summit. It was Paul's 57th birthday and Marta had carried a bottle of bubbles all the way to celebrate. On our way down, we collected our gear from below the buttress and headed along the ridge towards the hut, thinking the tricky obstacles had finished. Soon we were climbing up and down the sections using the fixed slings and ropes. Making it to the Thermo Glacier was a big relief. Now we just needed to walk on the snow down to the hut, hopefully before the darkness arrived. The cloud rolled in and towards the bottom we got a few glimpses of the lower section of the ISO Glacier, far below Shipona Ridge. It looks like a scary spot. That night we ate cake to celebrate getting to the top of one of our 3,000 metre peaks, a first for Marta and I. Parts of this adventure would have been more comfortable <laughs> with a guide. Having another axe on the steep part of the kangaroo patch would have been way better. Having better crampons would have provided more confidence. Carrying a rope might have been useful in some sections on the ridge. I think I need an adventure moderator. Someone I can run future trip plans past to have more great adventures without the scary moments. Maybe, is that pointing at it? Yeah, possibly I'll yeah. just do my finger at work. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs>